Hey, thanks for clicking on this video. My name is Zaji and today I want to talk to you a little bit about some knitting things. In particular, I want to share with you this recent project that I just finished and I want to get into all of the deets about it. So if you're interested in hearing a little bit about some knitting, then I encourage you to subscribe and continue watching. This is the Spark Cardigan from Andrea Mowry, and it is my new love, my new obsession. Actually not new. I started working on this project in August and it kind of took a backseat when I started working on another sweater that um, I was really, really moving quite fast on. But then Christmas came around and I started working on all of those things for Christmas time and so a lot of things hibernated for some time. So um, I started working on the other the other sweater, but I was like, oh, I need to finish this cardigan. I love it so much, and I know that I will wear it all the time. I know I can live in it forever, and that's what I intend on doing. So um, this cardigan is um, in the size two. So she has nine sizes in this pattern, and I am wearing size two. Um, or that's the size that I was knitting with on this pattern and I think that it's a pretty good fit. I'd say that everything fits me the way that it fits the sample that she has knitted and um, is wearing in the photos. So I think the, the sizing was actually pretty great for this pattern um, with her recommendations. So I used these two yarns from Cascade. This one is the Cascade 220 which is a um, I think it's more considered like a light worsted um, weight yarn, which is a little bit lighter than she recommended, I think. Um, but I also used Cascade 220, but this is the Super Wash Wave, which is their kind of like variegated, colorful line of this yarn. But this one is obviously machine washable and this one isn't. So I knew for a fact that because one, this yarn isn't exactly to the specifications that she was talking about in the pattern, but also because they are completely different, um, I guess, styles of yarn. So I um, ended up doing three swatches for this pattern, and that is so painful to say because I'm just, I'm experiencing a little bit of stress just thinking about that. I'm not someone who likes to swatch, but I am an extremely tight knitter. And so um, I usually have to go up maybe one size, but usually not two sizes. So I was very heartbroken to have to do that. But I think it was obviously, like I mentioned, um, because of the yarn that I was using and all of that. So super wash yarn tends to um, get a lot like slinkier once you wash it and obviously non super wash yarn is a lot fluffier after you've like blocked it and everything so I had a lot of things working against me but those three swatches were all very painful but I got through them and I had you know really gotten a chance to practice with my color work and this pattern is really where my obsession with color work kind of started um, in terms of actually like knitting it. I've always loved color work and I've just been really intimidated and I started with a smaller project which was a single mitten. I have not made the other mitten yet but you can add me on Ravelry down below um, if you want to see what that mitten looks like. Um, but it turned out really really well and I actually had a lot of fun working with um, the two yarns. It was just such an experience that I would highly recommend. Um, anyway, if you like to knit, I definitely say just go for it with color work because it's so beautiful. The designs are always so stunning. So anyway, it's something to practice with and I had a lot of time to be able to practice on working the larger motif, which is what I did for some of the swatches and also just the main body work or the main color work that's on the body as well. So it was you know, swatching is worth it and all of that, we all know, but it was still painful. So once I finally got done with that, when I was able to start putting things on the needles, 
my sleeves, the sleeves just flew right off of my needles. I didn't even like blink and they were already done. And that was amazing because the double cuff is long. Child, that is long, long. Listen, I am looking at every inch when I'm looking at a knitting pattern. And when I'm doing something like the same for that long, it gets kind of, but I actually really enjoy doing ribbing as well. So, um, I really appreciated the fact that the color work repetition, I think it's a two stitch repeat. So for the main body, so it's not unlike working regular stockinette for me to go through these, but it's obviously a lot more interesting to look at while I'm knitting, but also the process is also a lot more interesting than just straight stockinette as well. So it was really fun to knit this. I was really gutted when I couldn't work on this anymore because I wanted to work on other things for Christmas. So being able to come back to it was just so, it was awesome. So I was able, I had kind of gotten to about here um, when I stopped working on it. And when I picked it back up, I just kind of put all this together, the collar and the rest of it, probably within a week or so. I think it took me a couple days um around christmas time because that was my christmas gift to myself to be able to start working on this again um and so that was great to actually get this all worked up i did have a slight issue with the collar while i was knitting because i clearly can't read i don't know <laughs> i was doing the short row shaping for the collar because that's how you get this collar that's you know obviously significantly larger in the back but goes to be much smaller in the front is with short rows. I just was not even thinking and I was only increasing on one side and it was, I don't know. I was having an aneurysm. I'm not really positive on what happened in my brain, but I only increased on one side. So I had this kind of flat thing on one side and the other side was normal. And I was just like, or not normal, but it was increasing and flowing down like how it was supposed to. Oh, sigh. I had to frog all of that. Like I had to rip all of that out and it was, I was gutted. I was really gutted. I am still gutted like thinking about that, having to rip back all those rows because I finished all the short row shaping and realized that I was being a dodo. So yeah, that was great. I pulled, ripped that back and fervently finished knitting the rest of the collar because I desperately, at that point, I was like, I just want to put this thing on because it's just, it's so close. And so, yeah, I fervently knitted and I even did the eye cord uh, bind off. And I think that my eye cord may be a hair too tight. My bind off may be a little bit too tight, but I don't feel like it takes away from it at all. I feel like it wraps around my body so much better. Like I love how it sits now that it's a little bit taut at the end. I don't know. But I have noticed that when I look at other um, people's versions of this and even her version, it is a little bit looser than mine is at the bottom. Mine pulls up just a little bit. Yeah, you know, what are you gonna do? I'm not gonna pull back all that eye cord because I cord is also a process that just it's so beautiful and I love the finish so much however it is a pain to actually knit up because it takes like twice as long as like a regular bind off does so you know pros and cons to everything but I definitely am obsessed obsessed I love the colors I love the way that I color controlled within the um, within the skeins because these variegation or variegated yarns sometimes don't have any sort of repeating pattern sometimes they're random and I'm very happy that with these it's not like that they are or with this particular colorway because not all of the colorways have such a dramatic color change throughout the yarn um, but this one does and I was happy because two of the skeins that I had caked up almost identically and I was able to do the sleeves to match pretty well I did do some color controlling um, around the body where the sleeves are joined and then you continue knitting I definitely had issues 
originally because I was like, oh my gosh, I don't know how I'm going to blend those together. And honestly, it ended up working out pretty well. I just was being really cognizant of how the yarn was going and I just switched over into another ball to get it to be in the right place. So I have bought, I think I only really needed three skeins of this yarn, maybe even two and a half skeins, but I bought four just because I didn't know how easy the, um, how easy the color controlling would be and I did not want to settle for something that I didn't love. I wanted to be able to do it the right way but I love this yarn so much that I'm definitely going to use it for something else and maybe try to make it match. I was thinking about doing like a slouchy hat with the same kind of color work but we'll see. But I do as you can tell have a full um, skein of white and this is what I have left over from the cake that I um, was using for my collar. So yeah, I definitely over purchased yarn but yarn doesn't go to waste in this house so I'm definitely going to use it for something else. So let's talk about steaking. <laughs> Let's talk about steaking. Let's talk about cutting your knitting in half and how insane that sounds and how insane it is. Um, honestly, it's a lot of hype. I'm going to say it's a lot of hype because if you're someone like myself who also does a lot of sewing or even just someone who knows how to use a sewing machine, it is such a breeze to do. It takes no time at all to reinforce your steak and cut it. Um, I also know that you can do all kinds of other methods to reinforce your steak. Um, I'm not going to get into them in this video because I don't know how well those work or how those work because I only have done the one way. This is my first time with a steak that I've actually cut and I didn't practice before because I felt fairly confident because I've worked with sweater knit fabrics before with my sewing machine and reinforce the edges of my seams with a zigzag stitch so they don't unravel so I wasn't really that scared about putting my knitting into the sewing machine because I do it quite a bit so I wasn't intimidated Um, and I know obviously that that's a really a really strong um, way to enforce it. Um, it's obviously not the prettiest looking reinforcement, but if I had done it in white, I think it would have been nice as well. But with the gray, I just felt like I used, well, I personally used gray to gray thread because I wanted to be able to see where my steak was. And since it's on the inside of my cardigan and it's thread, <laughs> on a bunch of really busy color work. I wasn't concerned about it being seen, but it's also on the inside of my cardigan, so who cares? Um, but I knew that was going to be my finish, so I wanted to make sure that I did do a really good job of catching both legs of each stitch. So I took my time and made sure that I was literally hitting every single leg the whole way down my steak. Um, and making sure that it was secure because I did spend time knitting this and I want it to last as long as it possibly can. Um, so all I did was steam block my steak into place on the inside and you know just press it and steaks naturally want to roll towards the inside anyway because they are um, because this particular steak is all in stockinette stitch so it just wanted to roll on the inside anyway so now I mean, you're not really going to be able to see it from that far away, but so now I have 
a reinforced inside and I have a cardigan that I have finished now <laughs> um, so yeah this was such a lot of new experiences such a huge cardigan in my life a huge um, influence on my knitting for sure because it really showed me that you know sometimes the things that really seem the most challenging end up being the things that are the most enjoyable and the most fun experiences and I knew that I was already kind of at a disadvantage because obviously I am recovering from a hand injury and every day I am just working to maintain the strength that I have in my thumb and really show my thumb how to be a thumb again so by knitting it is already kind of a challenge and a workout for me but I don't want to feel like I'm limited just because I have had this happen to me. So I was happy that I gave color work a shot and I really hope that you will maybe dabble in a little bit of color work because it is such a beautiful way of knitting and it is also very warm. So super warm. And yeah, I am obsessed. I think I've said that already. So now let's go into where next. So this pattern was actually released with another pattern, um, which they're pretty much identical in the lines of the main bodies. So they both are shawl cardigans and they both have the double fold cuffs and the ribbing is the same. Um, the differences are that um, this other cardigan closes with a button closure and like it's a button band in the front instead of the um, tie waist so it doesn't have the belt loops but it also has pockets and I'm going to be making that version um, for my husband so it also doesn't have the chevron motif um, on the sleeves and the bottom of the bodice as well so I'm making that one for my husband and I've already bought the yarn because I knew that I love this pattern and I knew that I was going to make one for him because I bought the pattern for him. I mean, I could make it for myself, but I'm gonna make his version with basically the same yarns, but just different colorways. Well, it is the same yarns, different colorways, not basically, they are the same. So this one is the non-super wash one and it is the Cascade 220. I will put the colors on the screen because these only have the color codes not the actual names um and then the like contrast color is going to be this beautiful super wash wave like it's a blue green uh it has darker blues in here too a little 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 bit of like an indigo kind of shade throughout it but i just thought the contrast of these two are so fantastic god because just everything this is more like a cool dusty color this is bright and fun and bright <laughs> and I thought it would be so fun for my husband to have because honestly he loves a good cardigan and um, I'm really excited to be able to make him one that really fits him comfortably because he always has some sort of issue with the fit of the ones that we've seen in stores so I definitely am happy to be able to make one for him as well and now that I know how quickly I can put this thing together I'm definitely gonna make it for him so you'll probably see that pop up pretty soon but yeah those are that's gonna be all that I talk about for this pattern for now and knitting with this whole situation so I hope you enjoyed this video I hope it was helpful to you and that you um, got something from it other than the fact that I hate swatching anyways that is where I'm gonna love and leave you so until next time bye bye